Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Good morning and good evening to you all around the world. You know, Christ is the Good Shepherd, and He gave us many examples in His Word on how we were to teach and lead the sheep who need Jesus, you know? He said to Peter in His Word, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, right? Sustain them, fill them with my Word, give them strength. Psalm 23 is a great example of how a shepherd, a pastor, a teacher, right, should be. It says in Psalm 23, starting in verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. See that right there? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He, get, he leads me beside the still waters. When we lie down in green pastures, what are green pastures? food, sustaining food for us, and the water, the living water. It's the living water that flows through us, God's living water that we may never drink again. So we are sustained by His pasture and His water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. As pastors and teachers, we restore the souls of those who are broken, you know, leading them to the water, leading them to the pasture, right? And restoring their brokenness, lifting them up for the name of Jesus, right? And though, you know, times there are times Christians fall and, you know, we all fall short of the glory of God, right? We all stumble in our walk, but that's why we have the pastor and the teacher, the one we can look up to to help us, guide us through these difficult times we are in. Because Christians are not going to live a difficult, free life, no. But it does mean that we can sustain and get through these times of difficulty. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, even though we go through times that we may, we can't fathom, we can't seem to think, oh, this is so difficult, this is so hard. And many times in this day and age especially, people are going through uh, pestilence and sickness, fear around every corner, like, could this sickness or pestilence get me? But we're not supposed to be afraid of the world and its pestilence because it says, They though I walk, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What are we living through today? The shadow of death at every corner, right? But we are to fear no evil because God is with us. The rod and staff that comfort me. What is the rod and the staff? You know, the authority of God. God's authority in, and we, in His Word, we trust, we put our faith in. We are comforted in knowing what He says in His Word and what He promises He will do. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. <laughs> Those times when you think, I have enemies all around me, but... Even in those days, God said, you will sit and eat with them, right? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You'll make peace. And my cup runneth over, blessings overflowing in your life, right? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you submit yourself under the rod, under the authority of God, goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And when you submit yourself unto God, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's how we are to be. Christ-like, the good shepherd, right? 
That's how we should lead the sheep in the days on the earth. It is difficult for many people on the earth because there's many trials and temptations and so much in their way. Sheep fall into thorns and thickets. And many times in scripture, it talks about them pulling them out of the hedges, out of the thorns, out of the thickets, right? A lot of times the rod ushers or prods along the sheep to say, keep going this way. Don't go that way. I'm pointing you to go this way. That's what the rod means. It's the authority of God saying, go that way. Don't go your own way. Sheep are not necessarily the brightest of creatures, but they know and trust the shepherd. The shepherd is the one who protects them. Be careful when you are a shepherd. God said, feed my sheep, but feed them green pastures and still waters, right? Don't feed them other things of the world. Don't feed them the meat that wolves would eat because sheep don't eat meat. They need green pastures and still waters, living waters, amen? So in this, let's go to Luke chapter 15. And starting in verse 3, it says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, This is Jesus, by the way, saying, What man among you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you likewise, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. Think about that. You know, Jesus has said, you know, it's the sick that need the physician, right? The ones that are healed don't need a doctor. But if that one sheep just strays away, goes off into the wilderness and gets stuck, what are we to be doing as pastors, teachers, leaders of the flock that need Jesus, right? That go astray. It is the duty of those who lead and have a flock of sheep to go after them. Bring them back in whatever means necessary. Bring them back into the fold and lead them back to Christ. No man or woman left behind should be the motto of a believer today. I've heard some teachers say, if you go off on your own way, I'm just going to go home to my wife. I've heard this said. Why would, you, why would you forget about the ones that need Christ and just go home to your wife? Don't forget about your family, obviously, but don't forget about the ones who need Christ, too. Just because they may be suffering doesn't mean you forget about them. Have compassion and show in your heart that you are worthy of the stewardship that God has given you. God gave you this authority for a reason. It's not to brag about or have a social life in a circle of people. You have a careful responsibility when you teach and preach and lead a flock. A flock needs green pastures and still waters. John. In the book of John, chapter 10, starting in verse 9, says, I am the door by me. If any man enter it, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture, right? The thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. I come that they may have life, and they that might have it more abundantly. Think about that. If we're supposed to be um, Christ-like, right, and leading by example, 
We need to lead them to the door and lead them to the good, good shepherd, right? We're supposed to be a shepherd, right? But we're supposed to lead them to the shepherd of all, the one that can deliver them from all sin and depression and sickness if only they submit to the rod of his authority, amen? So in this, let's keep reading. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That's the duty of a pastor, a teacher, whoever is responsible for a flock. You give your life for the sheep. No matter what. Don't go home to your wife and kids, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't forget about your family. I want to be clear about that, but I want, I don't want you to overlook those who are lost and have lost their way in Christ and you just focus on other things, right? People tend to put other things before God, before ministry, before those who need Jesus. They seem to make an idol of certain things in life. And we don't need to have idols as our focus. We need to focus on the lost. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. I want you to think about that. Think about that. But he that is a hireling. What is a hireling? Someone who professes God's word, right? But maybe in it for profit. Think about that. A hireling. What is a hireling? He is paid to do this work, right? Okay. Paid to do it. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't be, um, pastors and teachers shouldn't be paid. People need to make a living. But what I'm saying is this. People focus on money, right? Pastors and teachers sometimes focus on the tithes and offerings more than they do on the well-being of their flock. Right? But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd of whose sheep are not wont seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. He may see the wolf and the distractions of the world coming to get the sheep. And in some cases, he may be focused on the tithes and offerings. Say, let the sheep fend them for themselves, Right? That's not how a pastor should be. Because the sheep then scatter when they forget about, when they forget God's word and the pastor is focused on the money. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep, right? Think about it. Verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I am, even so, the Father knoweth me, even so know I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. So other sheep, so Jesus focuses even on other sheep that are not in the fold as well. I must also bring, and they hear my voice, and there I shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Now I want you to think about it. That's the dedication of the shepherd that's the dedication believers should have for the sheep and for the people who are lost around them. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's the attitude that we as believers need to have. Not one soul left behind, right? That's the a attitude of a soldier. Don't leave your partner behind or they'll die in battle and get captured by the enemy. So don't leave your brother or sister behind. 
Do what you can to bring them along. And that's the focus of the shepherd. And that's how we should be in teaching our sheep. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.